بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد عيلة حبت في الله continuing on in our study of هذه الدعوة وعقيدة إمام مقبل بن هادي الوادع الله يرحمه he said نرى وجوب تعاون مع أي المسلم في الحق إمام مقبل رحمة الله عليه he said as is in accordance with the the عقيدة and منهج of أهل السنة he said, and we see that it's an obligation to cooperate with any Muslim regarding the truth. This is very important. This is what Imam Mukbil said. And the tafsil is, is about to come. The details are about to come. But it shows us the importance that this is the asal, is that we cooperate together as Muslims. That we don't fight each other. We don't have a masjid. You know, you're on the same minhaj, you're on the same dawah, but you're, you're busy cursing each other, spending all your efforts and attacking each other, and Ahl al is skating away, just walking by untouched, not even spoken about, hardly written about. But yet you spend tons, hours and hours and days and nights and, and days speaking about your brothers who are closest to you. This is a, a, a tragedy and a travesty that's befallen us, and I don't know if this has a precedence in the history of Islam or not, the fitna that we see between Ahl Sunnah, that how Ahl Sunnah uh, is dividing, and that there are some that are very mutasahal with many of the principles of Ahl Sunnah, you know, very easy with the principles, and as they say, mumayr. And then there are some from Ahl Sunnah, and I'm saying that these are all from Ahl Sunnah, there are some that are more extreme. They go beyond the, the, the boundaries. The boundaries say this, the Sirat Allah Mustaqim is this way, but they go beyond it. So they fall into some bid'ah as well. So it's, it's a terrible tragedy that we find ourselves in, and may Allah protect us, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with al nafid us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with abad, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to follow the advice of the ulama al-Rabbaniyun. Those ulama that are leading the way. Those ulama that have the balance. Those ulama that call the kitab ila wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the salaf without wavering. And they have full understanding. And they look at the maslaha and the mafsada in issues. And they tell it, they give us how, to, how we can understand and practice. May Allah bless us to, to follow their advice. Imam Muqbil Rahmatullah he said, or is meant what is mentioned in the explanation of this. Min aqida, wa min aqida ta ahl sunnati wal jama'a wujub ta'awan ma'al muslimin fi hadood al haq wa fi ma la yukhalaf kitab wa sunnah. Qala Allahu ta'ala wa ta'awan ala birri wa taqwa wa la ta'awanu ala la ithmi wa udwan. The Imam said, Rahmatullah Ali, beautiful, beautiful ibara. He said, and from the Aqidah, from the creed of Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Sunnah Tibul Jama'ah, is the obligation to cooperate with the Muslims. It's muqayyid now. It's restricted. Fi hudud al haq. To cooperate with the Muslims within the boundaries of the truth. And in that which does not differ with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in Kitab Al-Kareem وَتَعَوْنَ عَلَى بِرِ وَتَقْوَى Cooperate in righteousness in piety and do not cooperate in sinfulness in enmity Allahu Akbar Fantastic Ya Habatifillah This Ibarah and it's going to be explained even further but just for those who may not listen to the whole sitting, uh, what's very important here that he said, "Wujub ta'awun mal muslimin fi hadud al haq, wa fi ma la yuxalif kitabi wa sunnah." He said it's an obligation to cooperate with the Muslims in, within the boundaries of Islam, and in that which does not differ with the Quran and the Sunnah. So that's an obligation. So, again, we cannot be to two, go to those two extremes. That when the haq is being propagated, we don't cooperate with him. Because we have some differences with him. Maybe not differences even educated by kitab or sunnah. Or different differences 
that are coming from the Quran, that are uh, things that are contradicting the Quran and the Sunnah. It could be our opinions, could be beef we have with these guys. But then we don't, we refuse to cooperate on the haq, on the truth. Likewise, we don't cooperate with every Muslim in everything. Some Muslims, they, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not cooperate in sinfulness, in enmity. So if your Muslim brother is calling you to bid'ah, is calling you to the minhaj of Akhwan al-Muslimin, is calling you to the minhaj of Jamaat al-Tabliq, go make khuruj with us, brother. You can help us say no. The ulama of Ahl Sunnah have spoken extensively and written extensively about not going with them. So, even if my personal view might be this, you put it on hold, you put it aside, and you go with the qawl of the ulama in this. Why? Because you're finding safety. Because they show, they explain in their extensive discussions about uh, these groups, why you shouldn't participate and cooperate with them. And the danger of falling into their bid'ah. Because that will increase the love between you and them. So perhaps you will begin to follow their method and methodology. That does not mean that you automatically you have to start with giving them hajjah, making a hajjah of them. You know, not giving them salams, not treating them kind. All those things, you have to look at the harms and the benefits of those issues, harms and the benefit of your communities. For example, as I've mentioned countless times, where I'm from in Seattle, Washington, is very different from... Philadelphia, where we have a lot of Salafis and a lot of communities and, and students of knowledge. Seattle, we have a lot of students of knowledge as well, but we have a different, a very different environment. And it would not be befitting, nor would you have any respect for your dawah if you just started making hajar of everyone. Or like this, the people would never respect you. You would never be able to speak. You would not have the, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that wouldn't be from wisdom. What you can do in one locality, you may not be able to do in another locality. Likewise, the way Birmingham is. Likewise, the way Luton is. Likewise, the way uh, wherever is. That, uh, every situation is a bit different. Yemen is very different. Yemen and Saudi are not quite even the same. There's very there's a lot of differences in the Dao. And Alhamdulillah, I've seen Dao in both places. I see, and I've seen differences of the, the, in the Dao of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah, the way they... They give da'wah in, in some aspects and, and so forth. Because of the mujtama, the society is different. So, ala kulli hal, we do not want to, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and gave us the qa'id right there, wa ta'awana ala wa taqwa. So cooperate in God consciousness, God fearfulness, you know, in, 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 in taqwa. And in piety, you know, so in righteousness. And do not cooperate in sinfulness, in enmity. So if you see your brother, sometimes this happens, you're dragged into something. You have a brother from Ahl Sunnah, and he has hatred for someone else from Ahl Sunnah, and he wants to force you to hold his view. Ahi, don't give him salams. Ahi, don't this and this and this. Ahi, don't smile at that guy. We gotta, we gotta set a precedence for him. We gotta do this, we gotta do this. Perhaps you could be ta'awin ala ithmi wa arwan. This might make you fall into cooperating in sinfulness and enmity, increasing enmity and hatred between the Muslims, which is something wicked and sinful. And you'll pay for that in the hereafter. This is another point I want to mention, which is also in accordance with this, and it shows us the danger that we have to be very cautious about these matters that of causing enmity between the Muslims. Even, even sometimes with Ahl Bidah, that it may not be the necessary time and place to attack and refute someone openly or this and that and the other. There has, there's wisdom in Dawah. And so we have to be very cautious of these things. And we have to be very cautious of falling into Hezbiya. Because as a, an old friend of mine, he told me about an Oromo proverb. Or Oromo is a tribe in Ethiopia. 
he said that when you accuse someone with something, and you, you're, you're, you're one finger, you're accusing them with this, but where the, the three uh, other digits are pointing where? They're pointing back at you. So sometimes you have some of the people who are the biggest attackers of his via fall into his via. They're busy so much calling and, and attacking everyone. They spend so much attacking that it, it's almost like a loose cannon. They begin to attack their brothers around them. Hisby, 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 and they just can't stop. Hisby, Hisby, Hisby. Next thing, their whole family's a Hisby. This, this shows you the dangers, and I'm exaggerating, but it's so real and true. We've seen so many communities torn apart. So many people have left the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. There's so many people who hate that Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. So many people who have a bad image of the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah because of these practices. Because many of the youth who didn't have the elm, who didn't have the wisdom, maybe had something of knowledge, but definitely not the hikmah. And again, it's only something of knowledge, it's not like the ulama. But the folda, the, 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 the chaos they cause around the earth. By a law, by around the earth. And I can tell you stories about Indonesia. I know my sheikh, he went to Indonesia, he donated, he, uh, he was building something, a masjid there, but then they fought. The people in the masjid, they couldn't agree, so he had to go to Indonesia to, I think, get his money back or, or do whatever, maybe try to rectify the, the affair. Here he has donated something for khair, for da'wah Allah, to set up a markas, a sunnah. But they differed because some of the students uh, supported Sheikh Rabi'ah, and some of the students supported uh, an innovator named Fareh al-Harbi, who was once considered from Ahl Sunnah, and perhaps was once from Ahl Sunnah. The point being, it tore the community apart. And likewise, you have over many, many issues. I've seen it in Yemen, definitely. I've seen it in, uh, in Ethiopia. You know, sometimes the poorest of the brothers, but they're the most severe in everything. Achi, why are you wearing pants? That's a sign of hezbiyah. Brother, organizations is a sign of hezbiyah. SubhanAllah, you, you just wonder what, what isn't a sign of hezbiyah to you? Here you have made tibdiyah so much according to your opinion and your sheikh's opinion that you've went into bid'ah. You've fallen into bid'ah. So this is the danger that we have to be careful. The Muslims are ordered to ta'awun. This is the asl. But we unite based on kitabi. La wa to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa That's why when we, when Ahl Sunnah talks about Muslim unity, we're talking about Muslim unity based on kitabi. La wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa bihablillahi jami'in wa la tafaraku. And hold all of you steadfast to the rope of Allah together and do not divide. That we're talking about holding together and not dividing. Holding on to the Quran together. We have to have the same minhaj, the same call. He's calling the Kitab Allah. My view is this. And this is what I've been taught. This is what I read. Any Muslim calling the Kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of the self of this ummah, that's my, I'm with him. That's my brother from Ahl Sunnah. The Muslims are your brothers in general. But that's your, your Muslim brother khas that you have ex more love for him because he's calling the Kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the understanding of the self. I don't care if he's from Pakistan. I don't care if it's from Bangladesh. I don't care if it's from the UK. I don't care if it's from South Africa. I don't care if it's from China. I don't care if it's from South Korea. I don't care if it's from North Korea. I don't care if it's from Seattle. I don't care if it's from Cardiff. I don't care if it's from what, whatever. Kitabi Allah Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We understand the self of this ummah. That's how we, we unite. Because our call is the same. Our minhaj is the same. Our methodology is the same. Our localities are different. Maybe some of the Messiah in our localities will be a little different, look a little different, and how we practice make tatbik of some of those things. But is he calling the Kitabi Allah wa sallam to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the understanding of self? I'm an amahu, that I'm with him. I don't care where he's from. And so we'll continue on in our next sitting, talking more extensive about what the Sheikh said with regards to ta'awun al bidr wa taqwa and cooperating with the Muslims in righteousness and piety because he bring, brought some very beneficial kawaii which is going to take another full sitting just to go through the beautiful speech of what the Sheikh uh, left behind or what was actually taken from his books and it will be a benefit for us in, in some of the du'avit or some of the criterion for cooperating. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.